You don't have to live like a hermit and trade everything that's important to you to become financially free. Yep, so a lot of times we see this fire movement and we see the success stories, like the people who really did it. And it's somebody living alone in the desert in a mobile home with pretty much nothing. And they, they coupon and they do everything to bring their expenses down to like absolutely nothing. Like, $600 a month kind of nothing and that's how they were able to retire early. So we retired at the age of 27 and right now we're in our early 30s. I'm 31, Chris is 32 and we are financially free spending all the money in the world. And our house is not that little thing down there in the middle of nowhere. No, so again like you do not have to give up all these things and we, we have to break this thought because that's what everybody starts with. Everybody starts with trying to cut their expenses down to absolutely nothing. And that's useful, right? Being frugal is not a bad thing, but some people take it too far. Some people give up the things that are important to them that they actually value that they can't buy back later to, to accelerate their journey or to reach financial freedom or to give up the day job. And that's because that's, that's the goal is to just be able to quit. Some people go take it too far. We have a certain set of questions and principles we talk about so that we don't trade what's most important to us just for financial freedom. So we are all about delaying gratification, right? But you can't delay everything, right? You actually have to choose financial freedom and life in general is actually all about choices mm -hmm. if you choose this path you get to have this reward if you choose this path you might get something that's not like a reward right like you just choose what you want and life gives it to you so one of the things that we ask ourselves is will i regret this and then we ask a follow-up question will i regret this really yeah so will i regret buying this or will i regret not buying this will i regret spending this time or will i regret not spending this time and then the the second follow-up question because your knee-jerk reaction is yeah i'll regret it i was going to have a lot of fun but will i regret it really when if i think about this a couple steps ahead will this get me to a better spot is it something that i i can get back so for example like let's say you just had a kid and they're getting close to walking and you missed their first steps because you were off on a business trip trying to make a couple extra bucks, right? And it wasn't even a good business trip and you didn't make that much money and didn't close the sale. I would regret that, right? Personally, I would regret that. You might not, but I would regret that. That's something I can't buy back. I would not trade anything for that, personally. Yeah, and the answer is different from, for different people. So for our real life situation, one of the things that we ask ourselves in the beginning of our financial freedom journey is, do we want to spend like $50,000 for our wedding? Mm -hmm. Will we regret spending that? And then we actually ended up going down the path of, you know, we, we'd prefer to save that money because we actually didn't have $50,000 when we got married. We had maybe like $10,000, right? To start our life together and get an apartment. Yeah, and... $10,000 plus a lot of debt. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I actually came to the marriage with $50,000 of debt. It's four. <laughs> Sorry, Chris. We had negative net worth and yes. that was not worth yeah. a wedding to us yeah we had fifty thousand dollars in debt and ten thousand dollars so we were at negative forty thousand dollars so you know but some people do it some people will finance a wedding and we're not saying that's bad it's just for our situation we that wasn't the important part for us right we no. would regret spending that 50k more than not spending it mm -hmm. And again, it's one of those things that we can buy back. We can have the extravagant wedding now if we wanted it. Another thing that we asked ourselves about before was, will we regret buying a big house in the beginning, right? Because mm -hmm. in the beginning, we spent $2,000 a month for accommodation, food, everything, okay. right? So our rent was like $800 a month. Um, I know inflation, whatever, right now, it's going to be more. And right now, it's probably more like $3,000 a month instead of $2,000 wow. a month. No, we were not in that nice of place, no. <laughs> but anyway, we asked ourselves, will we regret spending this money or will we not? And for us, we were simple people. We still are simple people. We chose to just live in a small apartment that wasn't super fancy. It had everything we needed. We were safe and warm. It was in a nice neighborhood. We could cook our meals. We were happy together. So we did not regret spending the extra thousand dollars a month on better, a better house or a better apartment. Mm -hmm. Yep. And again, this the answer is not always no. By the way. So uh, another thing that we looked at was uh, I used to drink a whole bunch of Mountain Dew. If you might have seen the Mountain Dew story where I would go through like six cans of Mountain Dew a day, which was like what five dollars. But if you think about it, five dollars times thirty is like one hundred fifty dollars a month. But 
because I was a software developer and it's basically my lifeblood. <laughs> but we decided that spending that money consistently over time was not worth it to me. I, I like water just as much. I like tea just as much. It's much cheaper to buy those things. So we stopped buying the soda in order to accelerate our journey. So really, the first step to financial freedom always starts with accounting. It's looking at everything that you spend and deciding, is it worth it to me? Will I regret spending to this? Will I regret not spending this? And those answers determine what you do. If you take action based on those answers, you will accelerate your journey down the path that you have chosen. Yeah. And there is something that we splurged on in the beginning, even, you know, even though we didn't have a whole lot of money was, so we told you we got married and we didn't spend a whole lot. I think we spent maybe $5,000 instead of $50,000 on the wedding. Mm -hmm. um, two years after that, we had saved up enough money to pay off the student debt. So we were positive now. Yes. And then we're, we were beginning to start thinking of investing. When we got to that point, we rewarded ourselves with a nice trip with our family, right? So we spent maybe like seven or eight thousand dollars with our families going around the U.S. and going to Disney World and mm -hmm. going to New York and visiting other family members. So we did do that, right? And the answer to that, right, was was that more important to us? Was spending time with our family at that time in our lives worth more than the amount of money we had to spend for it? And the answer at the time was yes. Yeah. So we did it. Because there are points in time where you can't get back, right? Mm -hmm. At that point, we hadn't seen my side of the family for two years. Mm -hmm. So we, the question was, will I regret going another two years without seeing them? Or, or would I regret the $7,000 more? And yep. we chose to spend time with family. And again, everybody's choice will be different. What's important to you is different than what's important to us. And that's all fine. That's why the, the question is actually the most important part here is ask yourself, is this worth it? Is this worth it really? And if the answer is yes, you keep doing it. If the answer is no, go ahead and reallocate that to something more useful to you. The other thing to think of is you want to think about the difference between what you want now and what you want most. So going back to that example of the wedding, right? We wanted most was to have the freedom to spend time with each other without having to work so that we can travel and see the world and see all the beautiful things that God created, right? And spend... and still be able to do that when we're young and fit and we can go up and down this mountain. Yes. So, Many hills, lots so, of steps. So we defined that as what we wanted most back then, like 10 years ago, we defined it back then. And so every time we would ask, we would look at, would we regret this thing? We would remind ourselves of what we wanted most. And that's what helped us frame our decisions of sometimes we would choose not to spend maybe $1,000 on a fancy dinner at that time, because later we wanted to be able to spend as many $1,000 dinners as we wanted without having to work. Yep. And it only took five to seven years from the beginning point of our journey to when we could spend that money. And again, one of those things that I'd like to bring up here is that this whole living like a hermit thing can be demotivating and you can take away the drive that's actually pushing you forward towards this financial freedom goal. So you really do need to stop and splurge occasionally to keep that to keep that inspiration, that motivation going. It's like a dopamine hit. Every, every now and then you do need to celebrate and you do need to spend time doing something that you love with someone you love with a little bit of money and it's okay. Um, so again, like occasionally, like we would never really eat out except on a special occasion. So for our anniversary, we would eat out. For birthdays, we would eat out. And that's pretty much it in the beginning. Now, we can eat out every single day, and it's completely fine except for our waste. And it was delicious. But <laughs> money-wise, it's completely fine. Yeah, it is crazy to think because we're like super foodies, right? So we really wanted to eat out a lot in the beginning. But what, what we, we wanted most... What we wanted most was to be able to eat out without having to be tied to a certain time to work, mm -hmm. right? So now we can have, we not only have the money, but we have the time to be here on this mountain, enjoying the nice food on the mountain. Mm -hmm. And looking, we're not looking at the menu for the cheapest items on the menu. We're looking at the items for the things that we actually want to eat. Yes. Yeah. I remember in the beginning where we would look like, look at, it's like, all you can eat is like chicken. <laughs> <laughs> you can't order steak or shrimp or steak and shrimp. No, never. <laughs> <laughs> you, no, you do not put the shrimp on the steak. That's an extra six bucks. Yeah. Yeah. So what we wanted most was to not have to worry about that in that, sorry, in the little foodie realm. So the decision we made in the beginning was to not eat out frequently. We never had fast food and we would only go out to a nice restaurant again for the dopamine hit occasionally on those special occasions. 
um, something really nice happens, we would celebrate. Yeah, we bought a new property, we would celebrate. We refinanced the property, we would celebrate. Yeah. So again, to keep that motivation, to, to refocus why we're doing all these money-related things. Yeah, but we wouldn't do it every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that now we can do it. We still don't do it every day, but we can. The other thing that you really want to think of is don't give up something that you can never get back, like your relationship with your spouse, right? If if I wait three years and never give him attention, we might not, like even though in three years I might have all the money in the world. It might be too late. The damage might be done. Yep, same thing with your kids, right? If you've got kids, don't give up the most important moments with them. Just make a couple extra bucks. You can't buy them back. They're only a certain age for a certain time. Spend time with your family. That doesn't mean you can't also work. I'm not saying give up everything and only spend time with your kids. Just make sure that you make some time for them. They don't need all the time in the world, but they need some of it. Yeah. And it's quality over quantity. Mm. Like one hack here is actually putting it on your calendar. So one of the things that we did in the, in the beginning, once we realized that we would... Um, go well i once i realized that i would go astray and just focus on work and not think about chris is we put uh once a week date night in our calendar so every saturday night or sometimes it changed days right but one night a week we would have a date mm -hmm. and i still had to work on not talking about work that's another video here <laughs> but at least we had a sit down it's just the two of us we're eating a meal at a restaurant so we did do that so that we were i was kind of forced <laughs> to, to a bad word so i we set a specific time each and every week no matter what's happening no matter how stressed we are how busy we are if other people are in our lives we still made time for each other mm -hmm. so that we didn't drift too far apart it didn't you know we didn't have like a whole year of not having one on one time yep and again to this point right we you don't give up things that are important to you you give up everything that isn't and that's that's what leads you to financial freedom cut out everything that does not matter to you that does not matter to you really and make sure you're spending your money and your time and your effort on the things that actually are important to you date night doesn't have to be expensive in the beginning our date nights were not sitting at a fancy restaurant right i told you where we we skipped this in the beginning we would go to a park and we would have a nice walk and we would go to the beach and we would have a nice walk and there were cheap ways to make sure that you're still connecting without without breaking the bank and without setting up yourself for failure in the future Another thing to think of is quality over quantity, right? So Chris, although he would probably appreciate me having a date every single hour, every single day with him, of that, every waking day. That was an option? <laughs> he, he probably would appreciate more quality, right? Not mm -hmm. just quantity, not just I'm here, but I'm like on my phone or I'm here, but I'm not engaging in a conversation, mm -hmm. right? We're just here. He'd probably appreciate more once a week. I'm completely engaged. I'm asking him what he wants to do with his life. I'm listening. I'm, I'm expounding on what he <laughs> says, right? He would probably appreciate that more than a whole day of us sitting together, but us not interacting. We're, all, we're both on our phones, phones right? Yeah. Um, so quality. So with your spouse, one hour a week of quality time might be more important than 10 hours a week of just sitting together with your phones. Same thing with kids. Right, with your kids. They might care that you ask them about their favorite Spider-Man movie and you talk about it and you talk about like the favorite scenes and, and you- the favorite dinosaur and all And the you things. also watched it, you know? Yeah, um, and again, quant quality over quantity. The, the things people cut from their budget, sometimes they're like trying to save save a nickel by not buying not getting Starbucks every day and oh I only go to Starbucks once a week it's not actually going to move the needle there are certain things in your life that you can make those decisions that really move the needle that don't adjust your quality of life much so like cost of living in certain cities and states is very different and that's that could be an avenue to really accelerate your gains without really sacrificing your quality of life um, it's usually food housing and transportation are the biggest expenses people tend to have um, so if there's any place there those tend to move the needle more without having to give up all the other little things that you might enjoy. So anyway, hopefully this video helped you see that you don't have to live like a hermit and give up everything that's important to you just so you can have financial freedom. In fact, if you put in place everything we talked about here, you will have an amazing quality of life on your path to financial freedom. And that's actually really important because you need it to be sustainable. Mm -hmm. Financial freedom, getting there is not a sprint. It is a marathon. It'll take years because even when it takes years, but it's forever, right? Now we never, ever have to work. Like, and I don't mean that for fun. Like, I'm not like, 
we actually don't ever have to work ever again. We choose to. We're doing this video because we love it. YouTube doesn't pay us. Yeah, so click the like button. <laughs> Maybe they'll pay us eventually, but right now, this is all fun. Yeah, this is for fun. We actually are doing this for ourselves so we can talk about the things we learn in life and then maybe our future family can see this too and who knows someone else you maybe you get something out of it so thank you so much for watching click that like and subscribe button so you can see our next videos we have a lot of tactical videos about how to invest and how to uh, analyze properties and all that kind of good stuff for you numbers people we're numbers people too actually so watch those other videos in the playlist thanks guys when we're on the mountain we start to think philosophically yes so <laughs> see you guys at the next video